Hello. All right. Ready? Okay, hello. Um, so I'm from, well, Cottage Labs and also University of Edinburgh, PhD student, and done some work with JISCA, Open Biblio, and Open Knowledge Foundation. All the little bits here that you can see are actual pages from my first year PhD review. So I'm going to talk about how we can do cool things with um, documents um, in new and interesting ways. And it's described generally as defining open scholarship, right? So the point is, when we do scholarship, what we try to do is try to learn stuff. Um, we often involve re reading other people's works. When we're done, we tell other people what we found. We refer to other sources and data. And basically, uh, what we do is we tell stories. So an example of a story is going to pop up any minute now. There we go. So here's an example of a story. This is the front page of my first year review. So I have a what, I have a why, why is this my problem, how am I going to solve this problem? And this is a, a package, this is a package of information um, that I want to uh, preach out around the world. Um, so how am I going to do that? So, uh -huh. yep, so my story is this package of information. I have my contents list. These are all the things that are in uh, this package that I'm pushing around. And we're going to use our technology to distribute this package. So by taking this and passing it around, all of you will do useful things. Maybe it used to be a book. Um, but, well, uh, wait a minute. I haven't done this on a timer before. <laughs> so, yeah, the best technology used to be a book, right? Printed pages. Here's a page. Here's another one. Lots of pages. Okay, I would take all of these pages, put them in a nice binding, and I would say, give them to you, give them to you, give them to you. And a publisher probably would also maybe end up owning that or, you know, um, pass it around, but um, I might not be able to do interesting things I want to do with it myself. So um, when we pass around these books, um, what we do is we use bibliographic references to stitch our stories together. So all of these little books, they have a title, they have an author, they have some information about what they relate to. When I give you the book, you see that information and you go, oh, look, this was by this guy, it's got these references in it. I'm going to go and find out more about these things. But we can actually do a lot more than that now. Right? So here is reference lists. Lots of reference lists. And they come from uh, my paper. Um, but they themselves, the content of them, are no longer the pointers. You don't need my name, my title, um, the things I'm reading, or my publisher to find these things. These things are themselves pointers. As long as we use them properly in modern HTML documents, we can find them. Right? So let's take all of these pointers, put them together in a collection. This is a bib soup, um, myself uh, and Richard and uh, some other people are working on trying to develop this so you can actually have somewhere to put a collection of your bibliographic pointers, right? But not only can you just have somewhere to put them, this is just a way of managing them, but you can actually do useful things with that collection, right? You can embed them in your document. So that is a reference list embedded in my document of everything that I've referenced that you can search so you can find out, well, who have I referenced? Search them by name, search them by title, look around, find useful things out about them. And that is, I think, much more useful than just having a list printed on a page that you then have to read and look and say, who is the author, who is this, who is that? And if we have all this data actually embedded in our documents, we can do really cool things with them. So D3, this wasn't written by me, this was written by somebody else, but it's open source, it's freely available. I can take this code, I can use the data that's embedded in the documents, and I can make really nice, cool little graphs. So we have an example of a particularly good uh, visualization that was done in the Open Biblio project by Ben Osteen. Here it is. So during the project, we got the Medline data set. And this here is sources of articles published in Medline, represented on a globe of the world, where the big blue pointy sticks show you how much publications came out of that place in the world. You can go to this, and you can use this online visualization to find out, based on what year, where in the world most publications were being done. Um, so the point here then is that with open bibliography, we have the pointers. We have the things that we need. Um, we could take these pointers and we can measure the use of these pointers to actually measure the impact of our work. Um, if we use these measurements to improve the process, um, then we can actually use process change to improve the things we do. So although we have all this technology, we have different ways of doing it, right? So what are the things that we do? Well, we, do we perform perfect experiments, perfect answers, and publish perfect papers? No. Um, we do what we can, we come up with what we can, and then we publish that. Sometimes they get retracted, sometimes they don't. But yet the par publishing paradigm looks like this. So how do we go about changing this? Well, part of the problem was it was very slow and costly to publish a book. It used to take a long time to put a book together, distribute it, and give it out to people. And so publishers came along and made that simpler, but they also put in the steps. So you have to go through the step, make the book, wait a few months, publish it. Now we can do that faster, right? So the things that are holding us back are... 
<laughs> a graph we don't really have much time to go into, but it's available online. So the idea here is that if we compare closed to open, knowledge to revenue, we can see that academic research currently is actually very close to publishing and information system software development, which are closed revenue systems. Whereas really, with scholarship, what we want is open knowledge. So we have to make sure that we can move in that direction freely. So what is scholarship? So if scholarship is discovering and disseminating ideas, then perhaps open scholarship is enabling the discovery and dissemination of those ideas by the best means available. But this is debatable. Maybe I'm not right, maybe we need to talk about this, and we're doing that this afternoon, starting today, and moving forward to see what we can do. So the critical dis differences are open versus closed. What do we mean by them? Well, why open our data? Often leads to the question, why not open our data? Well, never mind that. How about who closed it? Why isn't this data available? Who says it isn't available? What's going on here? Uh, wait a minute. Right. Well, I didn't do it. Was it you? Did any of you decide to close our data? I don't want it closed. Do any of you want it closed? I don't really see why we would want it closed. So it appears then that it's open. If all of this information, we have these tools and, and we have you know, our information that we make that we want to give to people, let's see what we can do with that, right? So here is, well, my point, I guess. Scholarship relies on dissemination. Access to and analysis of more and better information is how new discoveries are made. Therefore, disseminability and discoverability are limiting factors to scholarship and research. We have the resources to do this, as has already been de demonstrated today. And there are some problems to do with copyright, IP, and so on, but we can solve these. Here are some useful links to all the little things that you've been seeing going on flashing past. Have a read of them. Uh, come and join us in the afternoon, and we'll discuss how we'll continue doing this in the future. Thank you very much.